Welcome to Wikipedia School. Our first topic is Gollum. A lot of us already know this guy from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. We're going to talk about some of the things in the article that maybe you didn't know after all these years. However, maybe we should give like a 20 second overview just so that those of you who actually don't know know kind of what's going on and those of you that do won't be bored by a five minute video. Basically Gollum was this guy who was a hobbit which you may remember being in the Lord of the Rings movies or you've seen them before you heard people talk about Frodo Baggins, Bilbo Baggins, you've ever heard those names those are hobbits. Gollum's original name was Smeagol and he literally killed his relative over a ring, the Lord of the Rings. Gollum went away into a cave for 500 years and essentially lost his soul to the ring. That's about where the Hobbit picks up, where Bilbo Baggins finds the ring and steals it from Gollum. Bilbo eventually gives it to Frodo Baggins, his nephew, his nephew. Eventually Frodo and his best friend Sam meet Gollum who guides them or says he will guide them to Mount Doom in order to destroy the ring. That's essentially what happens with Gollum in the stories that most people know. Now on to the more interesting things that we probably didn't know. There are three types of different hobbits. There are the Harfoots, the first type to enter the Shire, which is where all the hobbits live. There are the Fallowhides, which I thought sounded like the most boring version of a hobbit, but it turns out that includes Frodo, Bilbo, Merry, and Pippin. I didn't look up Sam, I still don't know what he is. You're, you're gonna have to do that as the viewer yourself. Gollum is the third type. It's called a Stur Hobbit. Stur. Stur Hobbits are described as being shorter and stockier than the other Hobbits and like to spend their time around rivers and waterbeds and things like that. In the book, The Fellowship of the Ring, it says Gollum loved and hated the ring as he loved and hated himself, which I think describes a lot of us out there in the world and also describes why I got divorced. A super interesting thing that others have pointed out is that he sort of acts as an evil guide and counterpoint to Gandalf, guiding all the good characters through Lord of the Rings. Gandalf being a good guy leads people down the good path and eventually dies, and Gollum leads them down the evil path and eventually dies, which just goes to show no matter what life paths you take, we all end up dead. Like I said before, most of you probably know Andy Serkis as the voice of Gollum. He's kind of the iconic modern voice that we all know and love. The original voice, however, was done by a man named Brother Theodore. And his literal name was not Brother. I looked it up on Google earlier. I don't remember what his actual name was, but it was a part of the Rankin Bass, Rankin Bass animation studio. Rankin Bass, Rankin Bass, I don't know because English doesn't give pronunciation context clues. He did the voice in the animated version of The Hobbit, as well as Return of the King, because for whatever reason, the animated studio didn't do Fellowship of the Ring or Two Towers. Don't ask me why, because that wasn't mentioned in the article. Another interesting thing that I personally didn't know is that in the original first edition of The Hobbit, the size of Gollum wasn't actually referenced. Since Tolkien made no description, it led to illustrations like this one, where he's, how do we do this? Yeah, like this. In later editions, it was noted that he looked like a small, slimy creature, perhaps like a starved frog. And one detail that's not in the movie says that he had pockets, in which he carried a tooth sharpening rock, goblin teeth, wet shells, and a scrap of bat wing, which coincidentally is just like playing a new character in World of Warcraft. Tolkien did note that Gollum had pale skin, wore dark clothing, and was often seen in poor lighting. So basically Macaulay Culkin in the 2000s. In Fellowship of the Ring, Aragorn says, let me check my notes here, that Gollum's malice is great and gives him a strength hardly to be believed in one so lean and withered. So basically Michael Jackson in the 2000s. I'm just kidding, I don't know the truth. Also, it appears Macaulay Culkin is doing much better these days. Michael Jackson, not so much. One of the coolest artist depictions I think I've ever seen of Gollum is actually in the article itself. This is a piece by Frederick Bennett. It's clearly based on the Andy Serkis version of The Hobbit and trades some of that cuteness for a little more emptiness. It's perfect for blowing up on a poster and hiding in someone's room. I went to this guy's website. He's actually done some really cool depictions. It turns out that since 2014, which is when this picture was made, the artist has moved on to some really cool Guardians of the Galaxy art. A really interesting parallel that I'd never considered before is that Gollum's story mirrors Cain and Abel in the Bible. Remember how I said Smeagol killed his brother Deagle? Yes, that's their name, Smeagol and Deagle, and was then cursed to wander the land for the rest of his life? I mean, that's 
Sounds pretty familiar if you're a Christian. Only difference is that Cain's curse came from God, not from a spooky ring. Others have also strengthened this connection because of the classic poem Beowulf, which I've never read. You're supposed to do that in high school, but I didn't. The main villain of the story, a monster named Grendel, in the story, not in the Bible as far as I know, is a descendant of Cain from the Bible. Big hairy monster guy. But since I wasn't taken to study Beowulf every Sunday as a child, I don't know as much about that story. Connections were also drawn to the novel King Solomon's Mines because of the character Gagool. Gabagool. Tolkien acknowledged this author as an influence, and they both used a lot of the same motifs. A recurring subject or theme, for those of you who don't remember, because I wasn't entirely sure. What is that related to the word motive? That has to be, they're too close. Yeah, there it is. Thanks, Google. Gabagool. God, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, shared motifs. Because both of their tales involve characters that were non-heroic, but turned out to be brave and capable during a crisis. As well as a group of main characters that go on a quest in a bunch of caves in search of treasure and return back to a happy countryside. Gagool is described as a withered up monkey that crept around on all fours. Sound familiar? Another suggestion is that Gollum could have come from the Morlocks in The Time Machine, which if you have not read that book, Highly recommend. I personally thought that nothing written before the 1900s could actually be good. That's because I was a big dummy. The book blew my mind with its scope and creativity. Definitely go check it out if you haven't read it before. One random tidbit from the article that didn't really fit anywhere else is that apparently at the University College of London, a bunch of students claimed that Gollum met seven out of nine of the criteria for schizoid personality disorder. I'm pretty sure we all knew that already, but it's nice to have some validation. And just so everyone appreciates just how good Andy Serkis' Gollum is, which is the main depiction that everybody knows, this is an animated Gollum from 1967. This is another from 1977. Here's one from a Soviet-era television series filmed in 1991 that was then lost and wasn't rediscovered for another 30 years until 2021. That's last year at the time of this video. And this is a 1993 miniseries from Finland. It gets worse if you actually look up the video content. And that catches us up to the most well-known version of the character, which Andy Serkis said was inspired by his cat coughing up hairballs. <laughs> Lastly, a few cool appearances of Gollum include number one, the 2003 MTV Awards in which Gollum won Best Virtual Performance and goes on a profanity-laced acceptance speech in front of the audience. Yourself. Number two, a British fan-made film called The Hunt for Gollum, which is on YouTube in its entirety and depicts Aragorn and Gandalf's pursuit of Gollum prior to Lord of the Rings. And number three, The Lord of the Rings Gollum, the video game, where you actually play as Gollum himself, which is currently set for release in 2022 at the time of this video. Man, I forgot to put a joke in somewhere about hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. But if you made it this far, which you probably didn't because it's the first video, the like button is what will make me money and allow this to become a career. So go ahead and do that and comment. That does it too, I'm pretty sure. I don't really know what happens in the YouTube algorithm, but that's why people are always asking for it. I mean, you can't blame them. I mean, did you, did you like the video? Do you want more content? Probably not. It's probably going to come off as super amateur. It's, this mic's literally just plugged into my computer. Not professional at all. It's just, it's all personality. It's all charm. All right, that's it for the first video. But I'm talking to no one because I have no subscribers. See you later, guys.